great. Um, I'm Leslie Ward, and I am the president of the Vermont College of Fine Arts. And I am delighted to see so many people here tonight. It is such an indication of how much we all care about this beautiful neighborhood and our Montpelier community. So thank you for taking the time out of your very busy schedules to be here. I want to start by thanking Orca Media for being here. They're going to be filming, and uh, it allows people to be uh, uh, YouTubing in and listening for those who can't be here tonight. And um, I also want to thank, who else was I supposed to thank? <laughs> you had one other person. Oh, well, of course. We, we are thrilled that Casey and her team are here, and we'll talk more about that uh, as we move on through the evening. Um, of course, uh, we want to talk, the purpose of this evening is to talk about the plans for the beautiful buildings that surround this building. But before we do that, I want to take just a little bit of your time. Whoops. Can you? Sure. Yeah. Maybe you should. We can probably even. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I didn't want to do that. I wasn't <laughs> sure. Great. I'd just like to take a little time um, to give some folks uh, some accurate information about the college and our plans and why we're doing what we're doing. Some of you may be very well steeped in that, but um, I've had a lot of folks and, and many of my staff have had a lot of folks come up to us over the last several months and express their sorrow that we're closing, um, ask us about relocating our, our faculty, and um, a lot of questions that indicate to us that there are a lot of people for you know a whole host of good reasons who don't really know who we are, what we're doing, and what our plans are. So I just thought we'd kind of start on a level playing field of knowledge. So um, let me start by saying that we are a low residency school. Um, and what does that mean? We're a low residency art school for graduates. Low residency means that our students get paired up with a faculty mentor, create an individualized learning plan, and do most of their learning from their home communities. It's a beautiful model for adults who have busy lives. You can keep your job. Your uh, children do not have to change schools. Your spouse or partner don't have to get uh, a new job or uh, have a long distance relationship. Uh, and you can have all the support systems that stay in place that you need in terms of health care um, and other wonderful services. Our students are all over the country and in some cases all over the world. And that is true for our faculty as well. This beautiful model that works uh, can have a faculty mentor in Washington, in the state of Washington, working with a student in Tennessee, or a faculty mentor who lives in Los Angeles, working with a student who lives in Denmark. It is a beautiful model in that it really is geared towards the adult learner. So why did we have a campus at all? if all of this happens all over the world. Well, each of our semesters, and you come for four semesters as a student, is punctuated by what we call a residency. A nine-day experience where you come together with the other folks in your program for a really dense and wonderful packed time full of uh, learning from your faculty uh, mentors, from uh, lectures that are given by visiting artists, uh, learning from your other colleagues and students. People uh, attend film screenings, uh, music performances, art exhibitions, literary readings. It all happens in this intense nine-day period. It's an amazing experience. It inspires our students. It creates community, which artists need. And um, it, it sometimes transforms a student's experience here. It's beautiful. It has an inordinate impact on their learning. However, from a time perspective, students are only on this campus for 6% of their two-year period, nine days every semester. We don't have students. So what does that mean? It means that we don't have students living here. We don't have students paying room fees. We don't have students uh, paying room fees that help us maintain heat and upkeep these beautiful buildings. Um, it is not a sustainable model. That became very apparent to the school prior to my even coming here. It is a, it is a fact that we have struggled with. Um, 
we uh, are also a school that centers our investment in our students. We, are, we take a lot of pride in that. We believe that we offer some of the best, if not the best, MFA education in the country because of the attention we give to our students and the community that we create for them. Because we're de dedicated to equity and empowerment and our mission of supporting as many artists as possible, not only did we realize it was unsustainable to maintain a campus that our students only partake of 6% of their time here, but that we were using our resources to an inordinate amount of their resources, their tuition dollars, donor dollars, in heating and maintaining buildings that were empty for part or all of the year. It was, um, it is also was not lost on us that we were creating a carbon footprint from these buildings that had very little useful return for both the physical and environmental costs they were um, causing, um, but just by their being there unused. So we took a hard look at how we operate. We took a hard look at what our students need, and we decided that we would uh, be better off leasing space on another campus that was used most of the year, and we could, uh, we could inhabit that campus at a time when they didn't, uh, summertime, and uh, that we could then put the money that we were saving towards the things that really mattered for our students. Scholarships, increased scholarships, investing in our faculty and our programs, and in our equity and empowerment initiatives. So I want to say loud and clear that we are not going out of business. We are changing how we do business. I understand that it impacts this community, which is why we're here tonight. Um, but we are very, very dedicated to our mission. We also know that there is a, a, a vocal minority of individuals in our VCFA community who uh, do not, uh, can't imagine us continuing without owning this campus. And they can't imagine uh, the school could serve its students without gathering here in Vermont. And while I really respect the intensity and the high quality of the experience that people have had here, our school is our community. The experience comes from our faculty, it comes from our values, it comes from our pedagogy, and it comes from what we do when we gather together with both challenging our students and caring for them. And we are committed to putting our resources to, to, to deploy them in the best way possible. So I hope that answers um, just some, maybe some confusion that may have been out there about the school. Um, I also want to say this beautiful building that you're in today, College Hall, is a building that we will continue to own we ha and the green. We have no plans to sell College Hall or the green. Our administrative offices are here. While our faculty are flung all over the country and the world and our students are, most of our administrative personnel are here. We have some who do work remotely, but this will be the heartbeat of the administrative offices. So I wanted to make that really clear too. Um, Tonight, however, we want to talk less about the school and more about the campus. So we've invited Casey Ellison and her wonderful group here, um, who, and Casey's the principal of 150 Main Street, the purchaser of uh, three of our buildings, to talk about her plans for Gary Library, the Crowley Center, and Martin House. Um, before Casey takes the floor, though, we also wanted to share with our community that we have two other serious buyers for the remainder of the 10 buildings that are for sale. Uh, one of those buyers is one of our current tenants, the new school. Some of you may be familiar with them. And I want to put on my glasses and read their description of what they do so I get it right. Um, the new school of Montpelier is approved as a general and special educational independent school by the Vermont Board of Education to serve students with the disability category of other health impairment, speech or language impairment, specific learning disability, intellectual disability, autism spectrum disorder, emotional disturbance, developmental delay, multiple disabilities, and tra traumatic brain injury. Many of you who live um, or who are in this community often have seen those students with their teachers 
uh, around the campus. They're wonderful tenants and we're just thrilled that they're interested in purchasing two of our buildings. Uh, and we're getting um, very close to a, a, a signed agreement with them. And while I can't disclose the second buyer, or the third buyer really, um, I can say that we are very close to an agreement with an entity that would allow the campus to continue to operate uh, in the higher education space um, and that uh, it would give the community the continued benefit of the kind of neighbor it has valued for years. Um, and that buyer is interested in the remaining five buildings. So um, we're just really happy to share that. And certainly as things become um, you know, more firmed up, we will um, be happy to share more details as time goes on. So without any further ado, I want to turn it over to Casey and her crew. We're going to um, have time for questions at the end. When we do get to that point, we'll ask people to come up to this microphone and ask your question. Um, that allows um, the folks who are streaming in on YouTube to see you and hear you and um, part, you know, understand uh, where the questions are coming from. So thank you very much for your time. And Casey. Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> I'm Casey Ellison. Um, I'm a naturopathic doctor, and I work with a lot of these folks around here in this room. And yeah, we're here today just to introduce some of the ideas that we have for these three buildings, um, Gary, Martin, and Crowley. Um, just a little bit of the technical details. We're under contract with VCFA at this point. Um, it's, we're under a due diligence period, so the sale is not final. Um, we have about four months to kind of go through, come through all the details, um, make sure everything would work. Um, and also have you know discussions like this, kind of check in with the community, see how everyone's feeling. And um, so we've been working together for quite a long time, um, a lot of us here, and everybody's gonna have a chance to introduce themselves and what they do. Um, but I'm, I just wanted to start it off by giving you an idea of kind of what we had in mind. So um, at this point in time, nothing we're talking about is final. We've started the process of a zoning um, application, but nothing there is, nothing's even been warned yet. So it's not, it's not approved at this point. Um, the point of us doing that is just to see kind of where we stand, especially with Gary, because we have some some ideas about Gary that we'll share with you, and we want to know whether that will work, whether that fits in with the, you know, the community and what everybody wants and needs. Um, but yeah, basically at this point, we are um, proposing and working toward having um, Martin and Crowley be um, healthcare space, basically. So um, we're looking at clinical space, um, a lot of different. Um, really cool integrative medicine practices that we all work with. And some of you may be familiar with the bathhouse plan. I don't know if, if anyone remembers that. <laughs> I see Joe nodding over there. Um, so we had, we had put together a pretty, pretty cool bathhouse idea for the area around Sabin's Pasture, but the scale and the timing and all of that just really wasn't working at the moment. So we've kind of, um, we've revisited that a little bit and we're looking into potentially putting a little, a little baby version of that bathhouse in one of the buildings over there. So healthcare space, a little baby bathhouse. And then um, as it says here, uh, we're looking into creating like a creative art space in Gary. So um, we're gonna get into all that a little bit more um, in the slides that we have. But um, basically performing arts, you know, music venue, uh, you know, conference space, all kinds of like mixed, mixed creative use. And the idea is for the three buildings to kind of blend and work together and have a lot of really cool um, things going on and people in them. So um, I'll just say that I'm probably forgetting a million things right now, but we will get back to those things. Um, we'll start with this, which is clinical space in those two buildings, Martin and Crowley. Um, like I said, I'm a naturopathic doctor. Um, I've worked mostly in the past with women's health and then kind of moved into oncology. So um, that's kind of the work that I will be doing. And um, should we, <laughs> that's some of us. 
Um, I want to give everybody in this, I don't know which one, maybe we'll just keep it on this slide. And um, do you want to go first and introduce? Hi, everybody. Um, so I'd be one of the people working in, it's Petra, Rowan, Rhines. <laughs> um, so um, I'm a deep tissue sports and injuries massage therapist. Um, I incorporate Ayurveda, Chinese medicine, and I would be working within the clinic space. And so that would be in Crowley. And one of the hopes with Crowley is maybe that the baby bathhouse would be in that space. So um, there'd be maybe potential for people to be doing sauna, steam, cold plunging, things like that to do a little bit of a circuit maybe. Um, to do that before and after sessions or for it to be a part of sessions. Um, and so, yeah, that would be my part. Hi, uh, my name is Dr. Christina Anderley. I am a local chiropractor and acupunct acupuncturist down on State Street. And um, I'm one of the practitioners bringing in um, a pretty stable and robust practice and um, vital life. And that being said, my, my main focus is really being able to uh, meet people where they're at with their healthcare needs. And I have a pretty diverse set of offerings, being both chiropractic um, and an acupuncturist. And I'm really focused on, um, Petra and I work wonderfully together because we're, we love sports injuries and you know, biomechanical you know, reorganization. And so we have great referral practice together. Yeah, we, we, we want to, we want to. <laughs> and, um, you know, as well as I, I love treating children with um, sensory integration issues. I work a lot with concussion um, in, in the same vein, sensory in integration, memory loss, you know, getting people back functioning where, where they really need to be. And I think all of the practitioners here, as you'll hear, we, we really, um, our practices come together really, really well. And we already have a really wonderful referral network between us. And which is why having having everyone together in the same space just is a really powerful concept that we want to share with everybody and and bring that together. Um, so that's me, and I'll give the floor to Wendy. Hi, everybody. <laughs> My name is Wendy Halley. I um, about nine years ago I opened Lucid Path Wellness on State Street. I am a uh, Long-time clinical psychotherapist. I, about 30 years, I just figured today. I, I started when I was four. <laughs> uh, almost 30 years. And um, I also, uh, so my, my psychotherapeutic practice focuses mainly on short-term uh, solution-focused employee assistance program work, which is basically working with, uh, in the workplace with employees and their dependents, and, uh, and also helping uh, workplaces deal with uh, issues they might be having uh, between employees and such, and uh, workplace wellness. A lot of, so that's a lot of my psychotherapeutic practice. And then I have this other foot in uh, a different world where I, I have a, also a long-term, usually, until today, under the radar <laughs> practice, uh, doing shamanic work. Uh, so basically entering a dream state and working with the dreaming of other people and helping them kind of, uh, I guess, change the dreaming, the narratives that are playing out in their unconscious. So there's that. It's very hard to describe, um, clearly. How'd I do? <laughs> yeah, you can ask questions later if you're that interested. <laughs> but the thing, that, the reason why I opened the Wellness Center on State Street, it's like the, the biggest uh, secret in uh, Montpelier, is that I, I purchased this enormous healing chamber that uses light and sound. I got very excited about it when I tried it out in Colorado. It's the only one east of the Mississippi it's huge. <laughs> it's about 3,000 pounds, and um, it's, it's, it's an, an incredible device that uses harmonics to bring your body into a, uh, into a place of harmony on all levels. It's a really cool experience. It's incredibly difficult to describe. Um, 
it's a marketing issue. <laughs> Uh, which is why maybe it's such a big secret. Could be. Um, but anyway, uh, I, I, uh, I don't need a storefront. And so uh, I also have been, uh, Christine and I in particular have been talking about combining our practices for a while because they, they complement e each other really well. Or they both, yeah, you, I said that right. Uh, anyway. Um, I am very excited about uh, about moving my giant machine into Martin because it fits. <laughs> that was the big thing. It fits, so I'm excited about that. And then moving the rest of my practice there as well. Um, <laughs> and uh, and let's see. I also I'm a podcaster. Uh, I don't do it live, which is you, you could probably tell from me talking to you right now. It's it's a good idea that I don't do it live. And, um, and I do some writing as well. Uh, and, and then uh, maybe I'll do some sleeping when in between all those other things. <laughs> Did I cover everything, you think? Okay. All right. Thank you for your time. Hi, everybody. I'm Claire Wheeler. And I'm not one of the businesses represented here. Um, but in my day job, I'm the Director of Inclusive Entrepreneurship at Mercy Connections. It's a community-based nonprofit in Burlington. And I teach business classes and self-employment to folks that have traditionally been locked out of access to entrepreneurship. So women, trans, non-binary, gender non-conforming people, people with disabilities and different abilities, uh, new Americans, immigrants and refugees newly settling here in Vermont. Um, and in the nighttime, I am uh, lending my services to these people who I love dearly, all businesses also that I am a client of, uh, to help think through the business plan. So as Casey mentioned, we are very much putting our ideas together. This is kind of the first step of getting feedback from the community and really uh, wanting to know what's going to work in those spaces, if those spaces will work for what we have envisioned, um, and if they're all viable businesses as well. So that's kind of where I come in with some spreadsheets. Um, <clears throat> so maybe I'll advance the rest of these slides. Does that sound OK? Cool. Um, so just to kind of review, these are some people that you could just look at right here. Um, but I got excited about the different colored circles. So that's why they're there. Um, so I'm actually going to, I'm just going to skip ahead to the, the simpler um, buildings. Uh, this is Crowley, and you'll recognize it as um, the newer building. Um, and this is where we're talking about having practitioner space, clinic space, mostly in the upstairs rooms that are that you can see there on the top. Um, and it's got a really beautiful entrance that you've probably seen folks gathering in, which would be um, reception. It would, it would be where we'd have naturopathic remedies uh, and different things for clients using the space. And then uh, the small hydrotherapy center, aka the baby bathhouse in the basement, uh, where there are already rooms available that that um, would work really well for that. So as you can imagine, there's stuff to figure out there, engineering and, and cost related to that. But that's the plan for Crowley. Uh, as far as we know, in terms of permitting, the personal or professional services use is all that we would need in order to be able to do all of that in the building. And so we won't be applying for any zoning changes for this building. And then Martin is, that is the building kind of right behind Crowley. I don't... Yeah, you can't quite see it in these pictures, but right behind it, um, this is where that giant energy genesis machine that Wendy talked about will be. And again, this will just be um, healthcare practitioner space, similar to Crowley, personal or professional services is what it's currently zoned as, that's what we'll use it for. And then Gary is the library, uh, which it, this is where it gets a little more complicated. Uh, so Gary, uh, for that space, we're kind of testing out and seeing what's possible, as Casey mentioned. Um, We'd really love to create a multi-use community space that's centered around the creative and expressive arts. Um, so thinking about it sort of as a venue, as a gallery, as a place for the community to gather for workshops and conferences, um, and uh, potentially also being able to enjoy food and drink. Tuila might talk a little bit about the, the, the juice bar idea that we have going on, but um, healthy and restorative um, food and drink available. Currently, um, Gary is uh, zoned for academic institute, library, and personal professional services. As Casey mentioned, we've begun looking at the zoning application. 
And in order to kind of create the most possibility for what we'd like to try to accomplish there, uh, the new conditional uses that we're looking at for that space include restaurant, they're listed here, theater and performance, exhibition, convention, or conference structure, and museum, gallery, and exhibition hall. So even those uses might give you a sense of kind of what we're, we're hoping to do there. Um, let me see if there's anything else. Maybe you can, I'll leave that for you. Yeah, hop on in, Tweeler Town. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Twila. Um, pleasure. Um, I am, yeah, I am very excited about the idea of potentially starting a juice bar in Gary. Um, and we're still figuring out some models for that, whether it's going to be some sort of like, you know, fresh press thing, or if it's going to be like, you know, juices that are prepared earlier in the day and then they get, you know, that you could just purchase and take to go. Um, oh, I forgot to mention, um, I am, um, well, I'm a you know, graphic designer and web designer, and I have been a raw food chef for uh, 15 years. So, you know, raw foods and health foods and all of that is kind of where, you know, that part of my, that, that you know, that's the part that comes in with the juices. Um, well, we'll make the designs beautiful too, um, but, um, Yes, so that's, you know, the idea would be to have um, a juice bar, you know, possibly like, you know, smaller scale um, cafe of like, you know, possibly to go foods or we're still working on the bus business models, um, as you can clearly see. But, but yeah, that's the plan. And yeah, that's, that's what I got. Oh, oh, I got the applause. <laughs> Um, I guess I'll just, I'll finish up the slides just to say, um, uh, Casey, you know, we've been kind of envisioning and thinking about a bathhouse for years in Montpelier, and we're also kind of seeing this idea be popularized in other places in Vermont. I just came back from a lovely weekend in Montreal where there are many spas as part of the cold uh, weather culture. Um, so I just kind of wanted to uh, highlight the, the idea that, um, Finally, in New England, the idea of um, hydrotherapy as a, as a health practice is, is becoming a little bit more well known. Um, and uh, it's really exciting to see uh, something being proposed in, in Burlington South End. Uh, and then the, the most uh, pretty recent issue of seven days kind of talking about uh, the, the practices of hydrotherapy and the benefits of it across the region. Um, so happy to talk more about sort of where these ideas come from and um, where they're being practiced and why we think Vermont, Montpelier in particular, could use one. Um, yeah. So I think from here we might, are we ready for questions? Anybody else wanna hop in? That's a great question. That's the last slide, thank you. Thank you, thank you everybody. Um, <laughs> Like I said, I'm sure we're forgetting a lot of things, um, which hopefully everybody can jog our memories by asking questions. Um, yeah, we're really excited about all these things. Uh, I can talk all day about the bathhouse idea if anybody has questions about that. It's something that I've been studying and working with for most like half of my life at this point. Petra too, um, and of course everybody else here has gotten roped in in a bunch of different ways as well. So. Um, please ask any questions that you have, and we'll do our best to answer them. Hi, thank you for your presentations. Uh, I'm Paul Carnahan. I live over on Sabin Street. Um, and sort of a technical issue, um, I was wondering if you are uh, owning the buildings, owning the land, um, the college had talked about doing a uh, condominium type arrangement. So I was wondering if you're entering into a condominium arrangement where you co-own the parking spaces and the heating plant and all that. How do you envision that working out? Thank you, yeah. So we're still working out some of those details, but we will not be purchasing the land. The buildings are all we would be purchasing. And yes, we are discussing a condominium agreement mostly to deal with parking, 
but there is a possibility the parking will be dealt with um, through a, a different kind of agreement. But um, we do have some shared heating with the buildings um, being kind of linked. We're gonna be kind of working on making that a little more autonomous and also kind of in agreement with, with VCFA at this point in time um, in terms of sharing that. So I think that was, was that all the question that you asked? Does that answer your question? Yeah. Hello, Joe Castellano, Saban Street. It's the Saban Street Mafia over here. <laughs> um, I also know Claire and Petra as well. Uh, I just want to say that I am very encouraged by the fact that you guys are coming up to buy three of the buildings, and I think that you're going to put them to some wonderful uses. Have a couple of questions. Now, I know it's still very preliminary. Do you have some sort of time frame as far as if everything went like perfectly? What your time frame to actually get permitting and have everything up and running? And then obviously I don't think financing is gonna necessarily be an issue, but you know, that's certainly another question too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like I mentioned before, we have a four month due diligence period, which is a little spongy at this point because there are things that, you know, like parking, we, we're, there are a lot of questions around that. We wanna make sure we address everything and traffic studies and everything. So um, four month due diligence, it puts us into July basically, I think, is that right, Katie? July. Um, and we anticipate opening the clinical space earlier than everything else. Um, <clears throat> we still have a ton of research to do on everything, but in terms of the, the baby bathhouse, we anticipate that taking some time to build, probably, I'm guessing, at least six months. Um, but hopefully we would be operating um, everything in Martin and Crowley other than that, starting in maybe August or, or September. Um, Gary is a much bigger question mark in every way because, you know, of course, we, we have lots of ideas and um, because we don't know whether, even we can, we, whether we can even get zoning approved at this point, we're not, we're not counting on anything um, in terms of it being, you know, any kind of done deal. So we need to figure that out first and then kind of where we go from there. It's, it's not, it wouldn't necessarily be a major remodel or anything like that. We would probably be using the building mostly how it is. So I really don't know when we would get into Gary. It's hard for me to even guess, but um, I'm, I'm, I would say maybe not till next year at this point. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, I'm Donna Ackerman. Um, my house of butts, VCFA land on Kemp Street. Um, my question is, I, I have a, a million questions, of course. Um, do you anticipate at this point that the parking that exists will, will take care of your needs? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that might be a question for Katie. <laughs> Hi. Katie. Um, I do think that what we have right now will accommodate the needs of what we're planning for. And as people saw in the campus master plan that we submitted, there are areas where we would add parking if needed down the road. So I think the two most likely places might be a little more parking right along Ridge Street and then the old tennis courts. So we'll, we wouldn't need that right away just based on what these folks have planned, but given some of the other um, that Leslie referred to, if those uh, items come to fruition eventually, and by eventually I mean probably five years from now, there might be some additional need, but um, right out of the gate, we're in really good shape. Okay, great. Yeah. Could I ask one more question, please? Um, and it's for you, Casey. How does this affect your plans for the use of the lower pasture, please. At this point, um, we're just holding on to that land. Um, we're really not sure what's going to happen there at this point. We're not actively seeking any other, you know, we're not considering selling it or, you know, developing it or anything at this point. Um, basically, the bathhouse, the original bathhouse plan that was intended to go in that land. We're, we're trying to create something that ended up being extremely expensive, as you can imagine. And, you know, 
our whole model is to, is is of one of accessibility. So that is something we're really still working on. How do we build something like that and then make it really accessible for people? So I'm hoping that at some point when we are able to expand the bathhouse that we might end up still building something there. I'm not, I, I won't say I'm hoping that. I, I am open to that possibility. And as you may also remember, there was some discussion of what we were calling phase two um, originally that, that we were interested in creating kind of a simple, beautiful, affordable housing, potentially like maybe some food space, some food incubator space. We talked about a lot of different ideas similar to this, throwing a lot of things around to see what would stick. So at this point, we're keeping it as open space. Um, we definitely want it to remain park for the community and whatever we do, that's all, that's always in the plan. So it would be a low, a low, I don't know the word I'm looking for. Low density situation, no matter what it is. So does that answer your question? Yeah, great. Hi, I'm Elisa Dworsky. I joined the uh, property on First Avenue next to Dewey. And I wanna say, I am so delighted to meet you and that this meeting is happening. Because this, you know, from my personal point of view, this gathering of neighbors and getting to know who the owners are, this is exactly what I was hoping for. And um, I also sensed, in your talking about Gary, because conditional use might come into play, some hesitation and perhaps some fear about a response from the neighbors. And I can only speak for myself, but to say, you know, I'm a designer. I like seeing constructive reuse of buildings. Please don't be afraid of the neighbors. Just engage us in open, transparent conversation. I think we want, I, I would like to see constructive reuse of the buildings. And um, I really appreciate the fact that you're taking a step to engage us today. And I, I guess if I had a question, it was, do you have any ideas about how ongoing engagement with the neighbors might take place in a way that we can support you whenever possible and encourage you, you know, to be as creative as possible um, within what works for everyone, including the community. So if you have thoughts about, I would say, you know, as often as you would be comfortable, it'd be great for me. <laughs> and, um, but, you know, I don't know what you have in mind. So if you have thoughts about that, I'd love to know. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, we, we have some ideas, but we're also, we also have that same question. Um, I should also say, uh, Petra and I live on seven, at seven college street. So we are, um, slightly further down neighbors, uh, to the college as well. So it's nice to meet many of you. Um, and for that reason, and for the reason of, uh, wanting this to work for everybody, we're really, we're really excited to keep talking. Um, so ideas would be, I think, you know, yeah, hosting some kind of ongoing conversation, whether it's in person or on Zoom. Um, we, I think, I think we have contact information for many of you because we've been trying to start that conversation. Um, so the first idea was just to make sure that we can be in touch as a result of tonight. And I think we brought a clipboard, an old fashioned clipboard to get to make sure we have everybody's um, email addresses. So the thought was we could at least make sure that we're in touch and begin the, the conversation of hearing what you all might need as neighbors or we all might need as neighbors and what kind of conversation is going to be helpful. Um, sharing updates as they come along, that sort of thing. So that's all that's kind of as as fully cooked as that idea is. But uh, it's certainly a start. And I think we can co create something that works for everybody. Thanks. So besides the clipboard, um, very old school, uh, we'll also be launching a website soon where people can see updates and read about what's happening. And that's still cooking up, um, but it will be, you know, up and available and there'll be, con you know, you know, all about websites. So <laughs> ways for us for you to see what we're doing, ways for you to get in touch with us, all of those things available. Yeah. I'll mention too, as, as part of the kind of business planning for Gary, we um, there's lots of folks in the community who I think have good ideas for use of that space and desires for use of that space. And so we'll also be um, 
it, you know, beginning a process to engage folks who uh, know a lot about running venues, seeing Meg in the back there, hi Meg, um, in Montpelier and what works and doesn't and who uh, have desires uh, for what that space could become just so we're kind of getting a lot of ideas and again coming up with something uh, a little more specific and a little, uh, you know, catered to, to meet the needs of the community. So um, those might be the same processes, they might be slightly different, like keeping keeping you all, you stakeholders, neighbor stakeholders as involved as possible around the um, procedures that are in the, you know, the development, uh, as well as sort of uh, building the business plan for Gary is sort of its own, it, it needs, also needs focused attention. So we hope to begin both of those processes as, you know, a jumping off point from tonight. My name is Linda River Valente, and I've been a Montpelier resident for about 25 years. I'm a small business owner, and I was also your librarian, some of you, for about 13 years when I worked at the Kellogg Hubbard. Also, your little people came in after school, and books were checked, right? So as a community member for 25 years, and knowing the arc of the soul and the spirit of this town, it is a great relief to me to hear that there is in fact not as much calcification or um, kickback at this particular meeting that I anticipated. It's a great pleasure to hear the way that people are receiving this information and to know that especially with the changing project around Gary and the way that it's still in, you can clearly hear, is still in transformation. Friends who used to go to the Langdon Street Cafe and so mourn the changes on Langdon Street, except for the lovely Jay Langdon. Um, you know, this is, it's a really exciting thing to hear about the potential shift in this venue for Gary. So I'm hopeful, I'm also listening. I'm also excited to hear the way that these friends are going to bring something back to town that we lost for a little while, but it's not gone forever. Uh, my name is Peter Kelman. Um, I used to be a neighbor on College Street right across from Petra and Claire. Um, and uh, even though I live on the other side of town, I think it's really important to engage people from the other side of town. Uh, some of you know that I've been doing a newsletter recently called the uh, Montpelier Public Engagement Newsletter. And anybody who wants to give me their email, I'll send it to them. This is the way we should be doing it. This is exactly the way. The DRB comes later. The DRB should not come first. The DRB, DRB is a very formalistic, bureaucratic process that creates animosity. So I say to you guys, thank you for doing this. And I would urge people in town, talk to your neighbors, get other people to become engaged. Now, I do have one caution. It's very hard to, putting up a website is not enough. It's very hard when everybody's got busy lives to engage them and to, and to keep them involved. So I think you guys need to be thinking about building up a mailing list. It's, email is very powerful, okay? So I encourage you to do that. Don't depend on a, a website. All right, thank you. Hello, my name is Danny Sagan. I live with Elisa Dworski at 31 First Avenue. I have a question about the, um, the hydrotherapy space. Because I'm following the models of sort of appointment-based therapy and treatment that you're all describing. And I understand the model of a juice bar and maybe some social gathering around art. I get that. The hydrotherapy space, which I won't use the word bathhouse because um, I prefer the word schwitz. But anyway, um, is this a public facility that's open so many hours of the week and we join as members or we pay once we go? I mean, what is the concept there? Is there, has that been discussed as part of the business plan? Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> All right, thanks. But yeah, we've, we've looked at some different models for it, and it's changed because the scale of the actual bathhouse, or what's the word used? A shit. Nice. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> so the scale has changed. So when we were looking at a bigger bathhouse hydrotherapy place, um, of course we were looking at memberships and all the different things, and having a clinic space there. Um, and then with this smaller scale, um, we're just going to have to see what works. Um, because there, it will be smaller, it'll be a smaller space, so maybe we'll have like membership and appointments where you get a certain time and you kind of work through like a circuit of things. So maybe, yeah, you'd start with a hot pool, maybe go into sauna, go into steam room, go into cold plunge, maybe you do that five times. Um, and so the, I would, the idea would be that um, you would kind of do that until you felt as though um, you were good, and um, and then there would be more people moving through. Um, so that is, yeah, one model. Do you have any other ideas? Yeah. Um, so accessibility is really important to us. We really like the space to be accessible to as many people as possible. Um, like Petra said, it is a smaller, much smaller model, and hopefully it's just the beginning, um, but we are, you know, there, there are many models of, of different bathhouses, schwitzes, all the, all the things. Um, so we've kind of outlined every one of them and gone back and forth and kind of created a combination of things. So we do need to see um, also zoning wise what's going to work because, for example, with personal and professional services, there's a requirement that there is a schedule followed in some way because of parking and making sure we don't have too much traffic flowing through. So there are creative ways to deal with that, you know, like e even if it's just like, oh, I'm coming in and do you have space to, for me to schedule right now? Like, so we're looking at all the things and we would welcome your feedback on that because we do want to know what people, what people are looking for. So um, let us know what you're thinking. Hi, my name is Patty Merriam, and I'm a current student at VCFA. Thank you all for coming and for the community. This is a, a lovely meeting, and I really appreciate hearing about what you're doing. It's exciting, and it's, and it's good work. But the very civility of this community that you have here with the neighbors is something that was denied the students of VCFA. We were, um, this was hit with at us in July at the residency with no warning. We had no idea that the school was going to be sold. And uh, we had no input in this. And regardless of what President Ward says, place is very important for art students and for the, for the arts in general. And when we come here in that intensity of 18 days for each of us a year, a total of 180 days out of the year, we're on the campus, place is very important. And the places that we're looking at moving to are now Colorado Springs and Susquehanna, Pennsylvania. We feel safe here. This is a place where, as artists, we don't feel threatened. And given what's just happened in Colorado Springs at Club Q, and in general, the crime rate both there and in Susquehanna, um, we're really unhappy. We're really, really unhappy and afraid about the move. And why? That's not on you guys, and I would love to see something like what you're talking about in Montpelier, um, but we would have appreciated this kind of a moment. None of the students, no staff, no alumni, alumnex were involved in this decision to move. And so I don't want to hold it against you, but I would love you to work with us. So we have a group called VCFA Stay. We have a website. Uh, where we put up our concerns and the research that we've done because we still haven't been given a plan from the administration. Nobody sat down with us and said, here are the buildings, we've done this analysis, this is how much it costs to restore them, maintain them. Um, there was no plan. So you guys have had more time with our administration 
than our administration has given us students and the alumni. So my, I have a question for you. Gary Library is really dear to the alumni and the students. It's an amazing place. We go there, you know, in the panic of a residency, that's the place we go. Why are you purchasing it if you don't have a really clear model? Because it's so valuable to sort of the history of the place and the connection. And I, so if you could answer that and also talk about if there were other buildings other than these three that you considered, because the Crowley Center was built with donation money, over a million eight, I think. So people who thought they were donating in the legacy of Louise Crowley, who was um, a, co a chair here, I believe, um, it's, it doesn't hold well, right? They thought they were giving money towards the VCFA, and now it's being sold to a for-profit business. So these are concerns we have, and I would love further conversation with you folks to talk about that. And if you could just answer them, some of those questions, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Well, I think some of that um, might be uh, not ours to answer, but for our part, I would say that um, I think that it's important for us to be able to hold the grief of this moment kind of right next to the excitement that we're having for the potential for this space. Um, it's a really complex thing, you know. I think, I don't know, I, I can't speak for all of you, but for me, hearing that VCFA was leaving was also a very sad thing to hear. And that was what I had personally processed first before this came up as a, a potential for us. So I really hear what you, what you have to say and I, I wouldn't ride over that grief and the fact that, you know, this is all very conflated and complex. And I'm sure for a lot of people, it's really sad. And, you know, we're entering into this potentially without, you know, we're not trying to, to skip that over. Um, we're definitely here for that, to hold that and to have that dialogue and to feel it ourselves. So I appreciate you sharing the harder side of it. Um, I think that I can't quite answer, I don't know how to answer your question about Crowley. That, that is a complicated thing and that's not something that I had any awareness of personally. But I will say that Gary, um, A, we're not, we're not sure yet if we're purchasing it. We're, we're interested in um, occupying that space probably for the same reason that the students love that space. It's a beautiful, incredible, just full of so much, I mean, it's, it's an incredible space. And we would really love to be part of, you know, taking that forward as an artistic and inclusive and incredible place versus, you know, other things that I had heard, like people maybe thinking about putting housing in it. It didn't seem, it didn't seem like that would be something I would really personally want to see myself as a community member. I thought, you know, maybe if we could create um, some kind of performing arts and other kinds of arts space that everybody could still occupy it. You know, the VCFA students who love it could still occupy it right alongside the new students who we know are coming in. So it's not a perfect answer, but I mean, I imagine it might be preferable to it becoming condominiums. So I hope. <laughs> um, so I would, yeah, without, without, just skating over that, I, I would hope that that does offer some degree of comfort knowing that you could still be in the space that you love alongside of all the new people that might love it. Hi folks, I'm Glenn Hutchison. I'm a, a, a neighbor in Montpelier across the river on Prospect Street and a friend of some of these people. Um, and this is another question I think that is uh, probably unanswerable yet, but I'm also curious about uh, Gary as a library. Um, that's a touchy subject at the moment and I'm, um, I'd like to just bring it up, what's gonna happen to the books? Does anyone know? Uh, what does the college think might happen to the books at this point? Uh, do you folks have any ideas? 
definitely have a plan to move the collection back to this building. Um, we have a space committee that's been working on that question for around six months. Um, the library collection actually used to be in this building, so it is in a sense coming home. And uh, so we are planning on uh, bringing the collection back into this building. Um, we are doing some deaccessioning. There are some books that in the 12 years that we've owned the collection haven't been taken out. So there is a process underway where the librarians are looking at the collection and pulling things out and checking with faculty just to make sure that it makes sense to deaccession some of those works. And then the rest of it will move over here eventually. So I hope that does answer your question. Katie, that reminds me, I had a question. With your staying with the administration in this building, from what I loosely understand, it tends to be the upper levels and that the lower levels had some classroom space. Will there be tenants or other people using this building as well as VCFA um, using those extra spaces or will that it just be VCFA administration in this so building? So all, all staff have offices in this building with yes. the exception of the library staff, but those folks will have Right, but aren't there here. classrooms on the lower level still, or am I mistaken? There are classrooms on this level, on the lower level. So and we'll how will those be used? We will continue to use them as meeting spaces and they may be rented out on occasion as they currently are to people who need meeting space um, in Montpelier. Okay, thank you. I'm not sure of the time, but I imagine it must be getting close to eight o'clock, but I wanna make sure anybody that did have, thank you, Joe, um, it is just after eight o'clock. I wanna make sure if anybody else had a question, um, it doesn't look like anybody is headed towards the mic. So again, I wanna thank, as Leslie said in the beginning, all of you for coming out tonight. We really appreciate the time. We appreciate all of you folks to come to start to talk about what your vision is and to Orca Media again to help us um, be able to provide access to folks who couldn't make it out tonight. And certainly we will be having follow up conversations as as folks want to hear. We want to engage this neighborhood. Um, and as we have more information, um, we are really eager to share that with all of you. So thank you so much for coming tonight.